Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. More quantum theory of angular momentum. So last time we defined what we meant by quantum mechanical orbital angular momentum. We considered a particle of constant mass m and we looked at its classical mechanical orbital angular momentum about the origin. And so we quantize that in the obvious way by replacing position operators, sorry, position coordinates and momentum coordinates with the corresponding quantum mechanical operators, self-adjoint operators. And this is what we have, 411, 412, and 413. Keep in mind, all the uppercase x sub i's and p sub i's are the corresponding quantum mechanical operators. Now we introduce this Levi-Civita notation, which is very convenient. And we prove that this notation encodes the different components of the, of the cross product. And remember that epsilon i, j, k is a number, one, minus one, or zero, depending upon the nature of i, j, k. And this is going to be the last time I use the subscript i, so I don't confuse it with the imaginary unit i. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, since we want quantum angular momentum to be an observable, is to show that the three operators are self-adjoint, or Hermitian. Now that, you would think that would be almost obvious, since the xi's and pi's are Hermitian, but there's a little wrinkle to it. So let's prove this for L1. Order is important. Remember that we're dealing with operators, and operators don't necessarily commute. So if you look at this, this is the sum of two operators. So the adjoint of the sum is the sum of the adjoints. We proved that earlier. But now, what about the adjoint of the product of two operators? Well, it's the product of each, sorry, it's the adjoint of each, but we reverse the factors. I was a little confused saying that, but here, let me show you exactly what we have. So L1, L1 adjoint is what? Well, it's nothing more than X2P3 minus X3P2 adjoint. But like I said, the adjoint of the sum is the sum of the adjoints. And so that's X2P3 adjoint minus X3P2 adjoint. And here we go, look at the first one. X2P3 adjoint is P3 adjoint X2. We reverse when we take the adjoints. Okay, and the second one will be P, P2 adjoint X3 adjoint. Now, everything would be okay, in, meaning we'd be finished with the proof if we could merely, sorry, I didn't say the final bit. P3 is, is a self-adjoint, so P3 adjoint is P3, and X2 is self-adjoint, so X2 adjoint. So now back to the, what I was about to say. If we could turn, if we could re reverse the order of P3 and X2 and P2 and X3, we would have exactly what I have up here. But we know that in general operators do not commute. But remember what we had earlier. The commutation relations for in three dimensions for the components of the position operator and components of momentum operator. So the components of position and the components of momentum, they commute with themselves. And different components of position and momentum commute with themselves. Okay. So, if we use that, we immediately see that we can reverse the order of x2, go back up here, 
p3 and x2 because different components commute and p2 and x3 different components commute and so in that way we've shown that l1 is self adjoint and we and um, uh, we can do the same similar arguments with the other two components okay so again you need to understand those arguments but then the next proposition is really important these are commutation relations for the components of or orbital angular momentum with the components of momentum position and orbital angular momentum so look at the pattern we have here the commutator of lj with pk okay the first two indices of the of the levi civita symbol are jk similar to the indices on the left and the last repeated index is what we're summing up okay and ih bar just goes along for the ride because it's going to come out of the commutation relations for x and p okay the commutator of lj with xk is ih bar epsilon jkl xl and then finally there's going to be a commutator of of uh, lj with lk maybe and yes that's exactly what we have here same pattern stare at the pattern and understand it it'll save you from mistakes later on so to prove that these are true these three uh, relations we they're just com computations so we start with the left hand side and show that we get the right hand side now in order to do that we need this fundamental commutation relation something you saw earlier it was the uh, third property of the commutators I, the four properties that I gave you and again I say a lot about patterns if you stare at the pattern you can kind of see how it works you can't necessarily prove it in this case but the first one you can see that you pull A out to the left and you're left with BC B commutator C or you pull and you pull B out to the right and you're left with the leftover commutator AC now so that one's what one needs to be proven and that's what is below and I'm not going to go through that but the second one stare at that that's just the negative of well the first one is commutator a b with c the second one is commutator c with a b that's the minus the commutator of a b with c and so you should easily be able to get it once you convince yourself that i is true okay so back to the proofs of these things of the proposition two part one part two and part three these are really instructive calculations to do so commutator of lj with pk we write down what lj is in terms of x and p using the kronecker delta okay now the kronecker delta uh, sorry i keep saying kronecker delta sorry about that the levi civita symbol levi civita symbol kronecker delta does come to play come into play but you should have been scratching your head. Why did they keep saying Kronecker Delta? The Levi Civita symbol, always epsilon JK L. Or J M N in this case. Okay. It's just a number. One, minus one, or zero. So we can pull it out of the commutator relation. So we're just left with X M P N commutator with PK. And now you see where that relation that we just derived can be used. And this is what we have. If you remember the pattern, you can see immediately what we have. Now, the first one, the first term has to be zero because different 
components of P commute with themselves. If they're equal, then you get two equal signs of the Levi-Civita symbol and has to be zero. Okay, so this has to be zero. What about the, the, uh, the other one here? This is going to be zero unless k equals m. So we're left with i h bar delta m k from the commutation relation. And so we're left with, so that's zero unless m equals k. We can put a k in for m, and we're left with exactly what we want to prove. Slick. Okay, the next one goes exactly the same way. So I'm going to leave that to you. Now, part three. in the proof. Commutator of, uh, let's do L1 with L2. The other components will be similar. So L1 with, what is L2? It's this. I mean, we've, we can leave L1 by itself because we already worked the commutator with uh, L with X and P in the previous two parts of this. Okay, so what do we do? We use that for the product of operators in the commutator, we can use the relation we derived earlier. And the first one, this will break up into two terms. And this will break up into two terms. So we get four terms. So the first and last term Are zero. We've already derived that. Okay, repeated indices. So all we need to worry about are the next two. Again, you can use the previous results, part one and part two that we just derived. You can see the only the only option we're going to be left with with L equal three in this. Otherwise, the Levi-Civita symbol will give us zero, and we're left with this, which is I h bar L3. Okay, so in summary, proposition two is really, really important because these commutation relations are essentially going to be, that's the third one, it's on the opposite, and the opposite page, so it breaks a little inconveniently. But these commutation relations are going to be the heart of the theory that we develop. Remember for the harmonic oscillator, the commutation relations of A and A dagger were essentially were the heart of the theory of raising and lowering operators for uh, they gave us the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the harmonic oscillator. We're going to develop a similar approach in D for quantum angular momentum, and these commutation relations are going to be at the heart of our approach. Okay. So that's a good place to stop with this lecture. I have a couple of other things I want to talk about in relation to the structure and commutation relations before we get into computing um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors for quantum angular momentum. momentum. Okay, that's enough for today, for this lecture. I'll stop here and see you next time. Bye!